there are several uh, signs for the Zeitenwende in Germany's foreign policy. It started all with the famous speech of the Chancellor in front of the Bundestag, which is the German parliament, where he said that Germany would need 100 billion euros extra for beefing up the federal armed forces in view of the new Russian threat in the east of the European continent. He said war is back to Europe, at least a large scale war and a war in which a nuclear superpower is involved. And this was a deep shock for the government and Scholz in particular, so that within three days he established this notion of Zeitenwende, which also means a total break of the relations with Russia within the course of this year, away from the Russia first policy, because everything what was linked to the East was always Russia very important for Germany. And of course there were very a densely webbed network of economic relations for resources, energy of all sorts, gas, gas and oil. And Russia was an important export market for machinery, machine tools and luxury car of Daimler Benz, cars of Daimler Benz and BMW. So Russia was an important factor as a nuclear power and as an economic partner of cooperation. That's over. The Russia first strategy is dead. It's not only Scholz, but it's also the new foreign minister from the Green Party uh, who has made this clear that one needs a new orientation in the world. And also the economic minister started going around in other countries like Qatar and other countries in the Gulf region for looking for oil and gas. And also Germany started to construct uh, LNG terminals for liquef liquefied natural gas, which P Germany didn't possess earlier on, in order to become more independent from any Russian uh, deliveries of, of energy. Now, there's no continuity at all. There's a break in the continuity and there's more change now. What would happen if this war would stop and would, would be overcome? That's a different story. But for the time being, as long as this war is waging and everybody expects that it will last for years, that it's not something for this winter and, and, and the next summer or so, that's probably for years, there's absolute discontinuity now. And new orientation of trade links to the West, to Canada, to the US, to Australia for coal and also to the Middle East of a uh, red-green government, government which wanted to green the whole economy, but now they discover that gas and oil is desperately, desperately needed, at least for some years to come. For the European Union, uh, that the Union has moved closer together, has become a mo much more unified bloc, uh, in, in world history and in relations towards the war in, in, in Ukraine with, with, um, and the, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The German government and notably the Chancellor had some problems to fully adapt to the course of strict sanctions proposed by von der Leyen and the European Commission and the High Representative Borrell. But in the end, also because of the institutions who suggested this and because of the pressure from the Eastern member states, the Baltic states and Poland notably, on the German and the French government as well. Because both governments were very reticent and reluctant to have too strong sanctions. They were still hoping that the war would be over in a couple of weeks, which all did not happen. And nowadays, uh, the, the German government, in the same way as the French government, have moved back to the center of the Union again, and they are both in favor of tough sanctions, and that's also true for Germany. Banning from SWIFT, no energy, even Germany was punished by, by Russia with a breakdown of energy deliveries uh, a couple of months ago, no gas anymore to, to Germany, a blowing up of uh, the North Stream pipeline, with what, which was a bone of contention, also in NATO and with the Americans, all that's over now. Um, and I think it has led to a cohesion of the West in NATO 
and a stronger cohesion of the Union as, as, as an acting bloc in this conflict with Russia about the, the international order in Europe and about the peace order in Europe, which Russia has completely undermined. Yeah. So it's, it's the biggest threat with which Germany and the European Union is confronted since the end of the Cold War. And that will lead to far implications. We may not all oversee them now, but it is indeed a sea change in the history of Europe.